Hello and welcome to the Old Flyers. We remember castor oil's use in aviation from the early days. Powerful World War I rotary engines belching out clouds of blue smoke, coating plane and pilot with an aromatic film of oil. In its heyday, castor oil was the best engine lubricant money could buy. They say that the smell of burnt castor oil is regarded as the best smell in the world. I think most World War I pilots would have disagreed with that. Aero modelers today still use castor oil in their fuels, typically 8 to 22% oil in two stroke glow plug engines. The oil expelled in the exhaust dissipating heat. So, what is castor oil and where does it come from? It is a vegetable oil pressed from castor beans which contain up to 60% oil. The oil comprises triglycerides, oleic and linoleic acids and other chemicals. Up to 360,000 tonnes of oil are produced each year used in the manufacture of soaps, lubricants, dyes, inks, nylons and perfumes. There is a written record from 1550 BCE describing its use as a laxative. Castor oil seeds contain the poison ricin. Chewing just eight seeds could be fatal. Ricin is not oil soluble, so it is not found in extracted oil. Castor oil beans are grown in warm temperature agricultural zones around the world and even in ornamental gardens. The popularity of castor oil as a lubricant was because petroleum based lubricants in the early 1900s were of poor quality. They were produced directly from distillation units and their physical characteristics depended very much on the type of crude oil used. Pennsylvania crude was considered ideal. At that time, castor oil had been used in car engines and transmissions. Being polar, castor oil bonds to metal better so is more likely to remain between moving parts and transfers heat well away from highly loaded areas. Its viscosity is more stable over a wider range of temperatures. Castor oil does polymerize when heated, leaving behind gum deposits. But in total loss, oil systems like in rotary engines, that is less of a problem. Just replace the oil that is used when the petrol tanks are topped up. Castor oil enters the engines along with the fuel but doesn't blend or mix. Petroleum based oils are diluted by gasoline so lose a lot of their lubricating ability. Castor oil is fed into crankshaft bearings where it is slung out into the crankcase. The mixture of fuel fumes and atomized castor oil is then sucked up the intake tubes and through the intake valves into the combustion chamber by the piston's downward stroke. The mixture is compressed by the upstroke and fired by a spark plug, burning most of the fuel and a little of the castor oil. The castor oil is then expelled on the exhaust stroke out the exhaust valve into the atmosphere where the airstream blew it back onto the aeroplane and into the face of our hapless pilot. This is the 100 horsepower no monopuff engine. It gets its name mono because it only has one valve. This it has no carburetor, it gets a rich mixture through the hollow crankshaft, it goes straight into the sump and the, the fuel gets mixed into the sump and then gets passed up into, into the um, combustion chamber through transfer ports which just just under the inside of here. So the way it works is the valve opens and once the piston comes to about two thirds of the way down it closes and then the, the cylinder pulls a vacuum inside it then it pulls a rich mixture out of the sump piston goes up and compresses, it fires, it comes down and then as the piston's coming back up to exhaust this valve opens, it opens, it exhausts and it stays open until it gets two-thirds of a cylinder of clean air again. Radial aero engines were designed and built by such companies as Clergo, Gnome, Rhone and Bentley. These engines relied on oil to be splashed around the crank chamber and removed via the exhaust. No sumps were accommodated in their designs. 
Due to the tortuous nature of the rotary engine's induction system, plus the need for the oil not to mix with the fuel, caster-based oils were ideal for this. The problem with the excessive gum deposits in automobile engines was not an issue with radial aero engines, as in their case, having a total loss oiling system, the oil never had the opportunity of gumming up. Charles Wakefield founded the Castrol, get it, castor oil and oil, company when he realized that combining castor oil and mineral oil reduced castor oil's tendency to leave cum deposits. Today, lubricating oils come in many forms designed for many different applications. Yet, none of these, I dare say, have the romance of the throaty roar, the sight and sound of a rotary engine belching out aromatic clouds of castor oil. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to promote our channel if you will. It really doesn't have a carburetor, but it has a mixing chamber.